Hello everyone, Kalive here, and in this video, we are going to take a look at the new gene scanner and the gene traits from the Aberration release in Ark Survival Ascended. So the first thing I want to mention is to please check the pinned comment below in case something was updated from when this video was released. This is a brand new mechanic that's just been added with the Aberration release, so there may be some adjustments between now and when you watch this video. So with that said, the items we're going to discuss do come with the Bob's Tall Tale DLC and the ability to see the traits also comes with the scanner which is from Bob's Tall Tale but the traits themselves are on all the wild dinos within the game but you will need the DLC in order to make full use of this feature. I do kind of wish they would have added this to the base game because the modding potential for this could be pretty amazing. Alright so with that said the first thing we need to answer is what are gene traits so here we have the scanner, and the scanner, we can go up to a creature and a little window pops up and it gives us the gene traits. You can also see these from far away by right clicking the zoom onto a specific creature and you can see what that creature has for traits. Another very, very important thing to do is if you go up to a creature, you can hold down H and you can see the details regarding these specific traits. So let's go to this one right here. This one has four traits on it. And we can see what each one of these does. Uh, for some reason, I think this might be per creature. But we notice that this one has a weight reduction for resources by 15%. This one has a weight reduction by 10%. So. There are some traits that vary from species to species, or at least the numbers do. I wanted to point that out here, but yeah, this is what traits are. They're just little bonuses that you get for creatures, and there are a wide range of them, over 60 from what I've counted, that you can access doing all kinds of things from reducing weight for certain items to things like combat bonuses, combat buffs. So you can get a wide range of traits that can go on any species that is able to be bred. And we can talk about the species in a moment, but I just wanted to point out that's what a trait is. And that's why you need these gene scanners to be able to see the traits and also extract the traits. Now that we know what a trait is, so how do we get these? So what we need to do is we need to go and find a dinosaur, like that turtle over there. We find a trait that we want, so we want mineral bearing for a carbon enemies, which is the trait it has. We can then tame this creature, and then we can go up to it and extract that trait. So let's go to one that we've already tamed here. We have no traits here. We have one here. We have this one that's three. It's the same process. We tame a wild creature, we can go in and we can grab that trait by transferring it onto our scanner. So once we have these traits on our scanner, we can put these traits back onto our dinosaurs. But there's a catch. You can only do that with a baby. So it must be a baby to be transferred to. And also, any babies we produce that are bred cannot have natural traits. So they have zero traits to start off with the traits only come from wild dinosaurs like this one right here and they must be gathered by taming the wild dinosaurs. Alright, so now that we know what traits are and how to get them, let's show you how we can actually give them to creatures. Let's go to our Gigantoraptor. We have a couple of Rexes here. We can hatch this egg here and drop this from here and now we have a baby Rex. So the term baby just means that anything that's not an adult. So we can give traits to any non-adult creature that we've bred up or even ones that we find in the wild. We can find a baby in the wild and we still give it these traits. But we can give them different kinds of traits that do different kinds of things. And like I said before, if you want to know what all these things do, all you have to do is just hold H and you can see exactly what it does. So. Diurnal means that it reduces the stamina consumption during the daytime by 2.5%. Notice that these two stack. So now we have a total of 5% stamina 
consumption reduction during the daytime because these do stack. Much like these right here, this one has three mineral bearing on it. And so these all accumulate and they stack. So 15%, 15%, so 45% total. Also, if we look at that again, it says it works for flintstone, crystal, obsidian, and metal ore. So with metal ore, RGs already have a 50% reduction for metal ore. So that also stacks on top of this extra 45%. But one thing to, to be aware of is that you can only have a maximum of three of these at any one time. So uh, three mineral bearings at any one time, three diurnals at any one time. And so you can't put more than that on here. If you try to do that, it's going to tell you that you are unable to add that one. There are some that you can only have one of. So this right here is vampiric. It heals for 5% of the damage dealt. This you cannot stack and you can only have one of these. So keep that in mind as well. But as we have babies, we extract the traits from the wild creatures and then put them on our bread babies. And we can have up to a total of five per dinosaur. It has to be a specific one for the Rex. So you can't throw a Argentavis version on it. It says it must be a match, but you can just put on the Rex version. So there we go. We have Rex with high endurance and we do have an Argentavis with high endurance. So we can go over here to our adolescent Argentavis and we can give it a high endurance. There we go. So you can only add them to non-adults, but when these things fully grow up, then you can only extract them from these creatures. You can't add them to fully grown creatures. And so that's how the trait system works. I think it really adds a flavor to the game that I didn't know it needed, um, but now that it's there, it, it adds a different variety. So it does things like it encourages exploration so now we can go out and look for dinosaurs with specific traits and grab those traits. You know, it, it encourages us to uh, tame more dinosaurs, even if we're just going out there looking for ones with specific traits. So I think the exploration aspect of it is great. Um, it does bring a value now to lower level dinosaurs before lower level dinosaurs were kind of worthless. Nobody would tame them. But now we do have a need to have lower level dinosaurs in the game. Uh, you can delete them too, so there's the option to delete them. Be careful you don't delete the ones that you do not want, but you can delete them from the scanner as well. So if you hold R, you can see which ones are stored in here, and you can just go ahead and delete the ones off the scanner if you don't want them anymore. But notice that there are quite a few different ones, and I was going to go through each one of these, but I realized that these all could change in some regard between now and when you watch this video. And just by hitting H, you can really just get more information than what I can tell you. For instance, distracting non-allied targets that take damage from this creature's melee attack deals 5% less damage to all other targets for 20 seconds. So you get a sense of what each one of these things do just by the statements that it's showing us by holding on H. So because there are so many different traits with so many different uh, use cases for the, each one of these. It's really hard to explain the best way to use these. It really just matters on what you want to do for a target dinosaur. So for instance, if I want this RG here to be the best mining transport RG that can move stone or whatever, and also have just a lot of endurance, I can just give it double high endurance and then triple mineral bearing and we'll get like a massive amount of bonuses for this one RG. So it's kind of specializes the dinosaurs to do things that would be very generic before, but now they're very highly specialized to do. So this would now be my metal transporter. So if I get some metal here, some metal ore, and I throw it in this guy, we can see that with the natural reduction plus the weight reduction, the metal for 100 goes down to 27.5, which is huge. And the fact that RGs can have, you know, th thousands and thousands of weight 
It means this guy can really haul tens of thousands of ore if I specially bred these things to do that. So the specializations really add to it along with the ability to go out and explore and gather more traits that you might need. Now there are some useless traits that you could get as well. Uh, for instance, like an RG with aquatic would be terrible. But let's say if you wanted to make a really powerful vampiric giga with a bunch of traits like angry and battle traits to boost up its damage. You could do that. You can make the ultimate fighter giga by giving it all these powerful traits. And I think the balance out of that is that you have to go out into the world and find probably a dozen or maybe even hundreds of gigas and extract the traits from those. So that's where the balance comes in. And I think the balance kind of works out. So it takes a while to get a mega powerful giga or karchar. But when you do get it, it's really a sense of accomplishment because you now have the ultimate killing machine that you spent months trying to get. So that's really the balance to that is the exploration and capturing versus just the traits that you get. So if you're concerned that this is going to be game breaking, I think it the potential for it to be game breaking could be possible, but it would take an incredible amount of time to get to that point. And if you lose that dinosaur that you spent all that time working on, that could be pretty devastating. So that is it for the genes. The last thing I want to talk about is the scanner here that I have in my hand. So besides implanting and extracting traits, there's a couple other things this thing does. If we hold down R, we can get the option to track dinos. Notice that it is a max level of 120, so you can only see level 120s or lower. And, that, and the level cap on this single player game is 150. But we can now track the nearest dinosaur to us. So if we want to look for a Rex, let's look for a Rex that we want to grab maybe like Vampiric from. So we can go over here and look at the Rex. And you can see that there is a arrow on our scanner now. It's pointing to the right. If we go past it, it points to the left and it gives us like an orange. If we're getting close to it, and then a green means that's where it is. It's like it's in that direction. So there is kind of an indicator on which direction to travel for the closest Rex. Now, where we are, the Rex could actually be in the cave there, the Overseer cave. So we might have to go like to a spot where Rex is spawn and then try to track it again. If we want to do that, we can just go to the species list again and click cancel. Then we can go fly over, let's say, the other side of the map towards the green obelisk and then start the whole scanning process again. And then maybe we can find the nearest one. So that's pretty much how that system works. The other benefit to this is that they now have introduced a way to extract embryos from mammals. And what this does is let's say we have a mammal here that is not breeding. So let's get it to breed. All right, so this one has finished breeding. So this also works as a embryo extractor. We can go up to this creature, hit it, extract embryos. We also get a buff on the bottom right hand corner that is for gestation monitoring. What that does is if we look at this creature, we can see that it has an embryo inside. We can see the level of the embryo, the stats it's going to have on that embryo. So you could do things like pick only the best embryos from this creature, extract them, and then that enters your inventory here. So now we have that embryo in our inventory and it acts like an egg now. So if we go over to this machine here, which is the embryo incubator, we can put it in here. It will start incubating that embryo. And this works just like the Ark Survival Evolved version of the egg incubator, but this is specifically for embryos. So there's no egg in incubator in the game yet, but that's not really that big of a deal because we do have Gigantoraptors, which kind of work like egg incubators, with the only exception that you can't see the stats. So we can't see the stats while they're in this embryo state, but we can see the stats from the scanner 
while we are looking at the mother that we're trying to get the embryo from. And this does do a lot of things in the sense that we can now extract a bunch of embryos. We can put these in, re in refrigerators, just like we do with eggs, and hatch them all at one time. And you have two options. You can either hatch the embryo, has to be 100%. There we go, we have a baby here. Or you can destroy the embryo. So if we have one that we didn't like, we can destroy it just like we do with the eggs in the egg incubator, whenever that comes out. Which that was with Genesis DLC and Ark Survival Evolved. Maybe we'll get the egg incubator early. Uh, but the gestation monitor feature was also introduced with the egg incubator, but this is now available with the scanner gun. A uh, big improvement to breeding mammals. Okay, so that is going to be it for this episode on the gene traits and the gene scanner. I hope this video helped you. Let me know if you do find out any more secrets about these items and these mechanics and put them in the comments below. That'd be great to help out everyone. I thank you for watching. I appreciate the support. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.